it makes no sense to be talking about waving Blake Wheeler this early in the season. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 922 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets, guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So want to uh, kick off today's episode by talking about something that was sort of becoming a little bit of a debate on social media last night, and that is uh, Blake Wheeler and the fact that he's bit, he's gotten off to a lackluster start to the season in these first three games. I certainly don't think he's been terrible or anything like that. But, you know, I started noticing on Twitter last night, there's uh, some talk of, uh, from different Ranger fans, you know, this idea that, well, you know, you could just wave Wheeler. They're going to have to go ahead and wave Wheeler. Let's wave Wheeler. Why are we waiting to wave Wheeler? It's been three games. And as I mentioned uh, in my tweet last night, the Rangers are two and one. There's somebody who, yes, he's older. He's 37 years old, but let's give him a little bit of a chance here. And, you know, the people that were throwing out the idea of waving Wheeler on social media last night, certainly I respect everybody's opinion and all that, but uh, this is an opinion that I just so happen to very strongly disagree with. And as some of you pointed out, uh, if we get to November and Wheeler's got like two points and looks slow and can barely move out there, then maybe it's a discussion to have. But uh, as far as people wanting to sever ties with Blake Wheeler after a grand total of three games in which the Rangers, by the way, are two and one, let's pump the brakes at least a little bit here. I got a couple of different replies to my tweet. And you guys basically made all the points for me. I'm, I'm basically just going to let all you guys that respond to this tweet do my job for the next minute or two here. So here, here's what you guys had to say about it. Uh, how many a lot, I believe he was the first person to comment on this tweet, said, haters, clearly they weren't watching last night. And he's referring to the game against the Coyotes. And yeah, you know, Wheeler ended up with four shots on goal. He had a play in that game, crafty veteran maneuver. Uh, he went around behind the net. The puck's loose back there. And he did that thing where, you know, he picks up the puck. And nine times out of 10, the, the skater on this play is going to you know circle around behind the net. They'll, they'll try to bring it out in front on a wraparound. Or maybe once they clear the net, they look to pass to somebody in front of the net. And I think the Coyotes kind of thought that that's what Wheeler was going to do. But instead, he stopped on a dime, came in front of the net on the near side, and tried to stuff the puck uh, you know, just inside the post there and came very, very close to doing so. So uh, that was a nice play by Blake Wheeler. And overall, I thought the third line had... A uh, good night wasn't necessarily in terms of like a ton of scoring opportunities, but overall they played well. Uh, just some good, strong blue collar shifts from that line. We've also got James saying, oh my God, so agree. If it's Thanksgiving and he looks washed and often tears up the AHL, we can talk. Everybody or everyone got to calm down, LOL. Yeah, that that's that goes back to what I was saying as well. Uh, we're going to see often, I think sooner or later this season. But let's not rush it. Let's let him do his thing in the AHL. And uh, let's not give up on Wheeler after three games to rush the 20-year-old to the NHL. We've also got Jake saying, while I haven't been impressed, I agree it's too early to call them to move on. Yeah, like I said, it's three lackluster games from Wheeler. I wouldn't even call them bad games. Just leaves a little bit something to be desired, I suppose. Uh, we've got Deb saying, this coincides with all the cane chatter. Wheeler was fine last night. Nothing's happening with him anytime soon. He's not being waived unless it's for immediate cap space. And yeah, again, I mean, you just got to let these things play out. We're going to talk about the Patrick Kane uh, angle of this whole storyline uh, a little bit later in today's episode. But yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. It's way too early to even think about doing anything. Uh, we've got Eddie. Eddie posted a Jack Black emoji and Jack Black in the, or not, a, not an emoji. Uh, what is that? A GIF. Uh, and in that GIF, you got Jack Black saying, you think? Uh, I'm thinking that's probably from one of the Jumanji movies that, that Jack Black does with The Rock. I haven't seen any of those. Uh, I will say I do love the the Robin Williams original Jumanji movie. But uh, yeah, slight Jumanji detour over. We move on to John. He says, people need to chill. They didn't sign Wheeler to be a top six winger. Temper the expectations. And yeah, Wheeler ended up with 55 points with Winnipeg last year. Uh, that's another reason why I don't think you can give up on him this early. But he did so mostly playing in a top six role. That's my understanding. Uh, with the Rangers, I feel like he's probably going to be on the third line. You might see him in the top six every once in a while if they need a shakeup. But with Lafreniere switching from the left wing to the right wing, that kind of allows them to 
you know, use Wheeler uh, as more of a depth forward, a uh, third line right winger this season. We've got Ray saying, I've heard that either Kane or Offman will, will replace him after three games on this app. I wonder what next week's quote unquote rumors will be. Well, buckle up because uh, those quote unquote rumors do seem to uh, spring up pretty often on Twitter. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll be trying to move on from Bonino or, you know, they're trying to trade Goodrow again. You know, some, something will pop up and uh, we'll, we'll see if there's any actual, uh, you know, credence to these rumors when they do happen. We've got Tony saying the Islanders are 2-0 and and look like they are going to run away with the cup. Rangers have to do something. Yeah, you know what? Just I saw a comment on one of my recent episodes in the YouTube section because I, I talked about the Hartford Wolf Pack the other day and the fact that they had a nice start to the season. They're 2-0. and And somebody said something like, send the entire Ranger team down and, and just go with the Wolf Pack at the NHL level. Now, I can only assume that he was exaggerating to make his point. But yeah, I mean, there do seem to be a couple of knee-jerk reactions, uh, good and bad, early in the season uh, when it comes to the Rangers, and I, I suppose hockey fans in general. We also got this from the fan. He says, or she says, uh, if he turns it around, same fans will be like, we should extend him. That might be my favorite comment because that is the most true thing I've ever heard in my life. You know, when it when it came to uh, Philip Heedle, uh, the last couple of years, and Pavel Buchnevich before that, that exact same scenario is literally what played out. With Pavel Buchnevich, when he was on the Rangers in what turned out to be his second to last season with the team, everybody wanted him gone. He's not any good. He can't play. Tried him for this and that. And obviously, you know, with Buchnevich at that time not reaching his full potential, you wouldn't have gotten a fair return on him anyway. And as it turns out, the Rangers did not get a, re a fair return on Pavel Buchnevich, but they felt like they had to move him uh, because of the impending high salary that he was going to have. But those same fans in Buchnevich's final season as a Ranger, oh my God, we got to re-sign Buchnevich. We, we must have him here. And then uh, Philip Hedl, it was kind of similar. You know, a few years ago, he was struggling a little bit and everybody's talking about trading Philip Hedl. And again, when you try to trade somebody when they're not producing and their numbers are down and their value is down a little bit, you're not going to be able to get as much for him. There's a concept called buy low and sell high. And then once Philip Hedl, you know, kind of turned it on this past season and really started looking like uh, the player that the Rangers thought they were drafting, that's when everybody wanted the Rangers to re-sign him. And in this case, everybody got their wish. Uh, Philip Hedl re-signs with the Rangers for, I believe it was a four-year extension. But it is funny to see uh, history repeat itself. And I have no doubt if, if, uh, if Blake Wheeler goes on a heater over the next couple of days and weeks, it's going to be like, oh man, he's a free agent after this year. Maybe just extend him one more year and make sure he's still here next season. Uh, that will undoubtedly happen uh, if Wheeler catches fire. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, I appreciate uh, all the comments that I got on this. It's always good to hear some other perspectives. And uh, I think a lot of you guys hit the nail on the head with, uh, with your comments here. I'm going to, uh, actually add on to some of these points because this isn't it. There, there's a couple other things we could talk about in terms of why the Rangers uh, need to stay the course of Blake Wheeler. And for what it's worth, I don't believe for a second that anybody in the Ranger front office is actually considering waving Blake Wheeler right now. Uh, this is just kind of a, uh, you know, a reminder uh, to stay the course. And uh, for those of you that are a little bit down on Wheeler and what he's given the Rangers the first three games, some reasons to stay positive, to stay encouraged, and uh, obviously keep your fingers crossed that at the age of 37, he's got at least one good season left in him. I'm not discounting the possibility that maybe Blake Wheeler, you know, he is older. Maybe uh, he just can't be the player that he used to be or anything close to a player that he used to be. I'm not saying that's completely impossible here. But I am saying that it is impossible to make that determination after a grand total of just three games. And again, three games in which the Rangers are two and one. It's not like he's he's been killing them out there. So uh, I gonna keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to add on to, uh, once again, some of the points that you guys made. Uh, also want to take a look at the Rangers' next opponent, which is the Nashville Predators. That will be happening on Thursday night at Madison Square Garden. We're going to tell all that good stuff in just a second. But first... Gotta let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, we're going to go ahead and keep everything rolling here in just a second. I uh, want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And for the everydayers, you guys will definitely want to come back 
uh, for the next episode. Rangers going to be playing the Nashville Predators Thursday night. So whatever happens there, we're going to break it down from every angle. And uh, hopefully in our next episode, we're celebrating the fact that the Rangers are off to a three and one start to the season. That would be great, you know, to uh, get off to that uh, hot of a start. Uh, you know, with new coach, new players and everything, learning a new system. Uh, you know, the Rangers have to take advantage of what seems to be uh, an easy portion of their schedule in October here. But that's our next episode for right now. I want to go ahead and kind of add on to a couple of the points that you guys made. Uh, once again, three games into the season. That's the thing I keep coming back to. It's too early, three games into the season, to be talking about waving anybody. Have a little bit of conviction. Have a little bit of patience. Have some belief in the roster that you've put together and let them go out there and do their thing. You know, nobody is above a, a mini slump or, you know, a three-game pointless streak in the NHL. Maybe Connor McDavid. Has he ever gone uh, three games without a point? I'm sure he has at one time or another. But, yeah, besides him, everybody can go through a little bit of a dry spell. And, look, Wheeler, I mean, again, it's not like he's – jumping off the screen in a positive way, but I also don't think he's jumping off the screen in a negative way, which kind of leads me into my point here. I really don't think he's played that bad. The thing that stands out right now is that he doesn't have any points in the first three games. Um, you know, and to just go through his stats here, there's not a lot of them because we've only played three games, but no points. He's a minus two. He's got seven shots on goal, including four in the most recent game. And just to be extra thorough, he also has one hit. And hey, he's 1-0 and on the face-off circle. Why are you guys trying to get rid of a face-off man who's 100% success rate on the face-off circle? You know, the, the Rangers have struggled in that department over the years. No, in all seriousness, um, I, I did myself mention both Blake Wheeler and Capo Caco in a recent episode of Locked on New York Rangers. I kind of looked at them as two guys that, you know, through the first two games, again, they weren't doing anything to kill the Rangers. It, it's not like they were... Uh, tremendous liabilities when they were on the ice. I just kind of threw out the challenge flag a little bit and was kind of hoping to see a little bit more of them. I think both of them played their best game of the season in this third game. And I do want to do a quick aside here. We'll get back to Blake Wheeler in just a second, but I want to mention a play that Capo Caco made that sort of flew under the radar in the last game, but I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It led to uh, the first goal of the game for the Rangers. So scoreless against the Coyotes. You've got Keandre Miller uh, trying to deliver a check in the corner of the Rangers zone. And it was against Clayton Keller. He avoids the check, but that allows Miller to pick up the puck. He backhands it up the boards. Uh, you got Kako racing over to the loose puck. He beats the defenseman there. And in order to get there first, uh, brilliant play here by Kako. He reaches out with just one hand on his stick so he can get full extension. And he chips the puck over the stick of the defenseman. And in so doing, now the puck is laying, you know, by itself. Nobody's really all that close to it, but Mika Zibanejad is going after the puck with a full head of steam. He picks it up in stride, two on one for the Rangers. Uh, Mika passes over to Kreider and Kreider puts the puck in the net, gives the Rangers a one nothing lead. That is all made possible by an awesome play by Capo Caco there. I was happy to see he got credited with a secondary assist on the play because he deserved it. And in a goal where, or in a game where goals were really at a premium, uh, that was a, just a huge play in the game. So, Great play by Kako there. But getting back to uh, Blake Wheeler here, another thing that I think he has going in his favor, and I touched on this a minute ago, I feel like that third line, Cooley, Trocek, Wheeler, I think overall they've done all right. They've had some tough blue-collar shifts. Uh, Peter Laviolette has gone to that line a couple of different times after a goal has been scored, you know, the shift that immediately follows a goal. And the everydayers, you guys will know, man, I, I'm big on that shift that follows a goal you know, whether it's the Rangers scoring it or their opponents scoring it, you got to come back strong and uh, you got to make sure that you don't fall asleep just because you scored or just because they scored. You know, you got to keep your, uh, you know, the pedal to the metal. And I, I think that line a couple of times have, has done that. They haven't necessarily created a ton of scoring chances after said shift, you know, the shift that ends with a goal. But there's been a lot of times where they've gotten the puck deep. They've been in there on the four check. They've been working hard. And if nothing else, the puck is far, far away from the Ranger net. And you're forcing, uh, in, this, in this case, the most recent game, the Coyotes players to expand energy in their own zone. You know, obviously board battles and whatnot and just trying to work the puck out of their own zone. So, uh, yeah, good stuff all around. And on top of that, you know, th this line here, Trotrick and Cooley, I think, both off to great starts with the Rangers. So, Blake Wheeler, again, despite a little bit of what I would call a lackluster start, not a bad start, a lackluster start, he's not doing anything to the detriment of this line. He's not doing anything... Uh, to slow down Trocek or Cooley. Uh, Trocek so far has a goal and assist. He's a plus one. He's got eight shots on goal. He had the game-winning tipping goal there against the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, you know, Trocek, we, we got to talk more about him uh, in a future episode. He's one of those guys, you know, another Ranger that can be a little bit polarizing. And at times, I think Ranger fans will, will sort of get upset with him. Maybe part of it is wanting Philip Heedle to play on the second line instead of Trocek, which is now the case. But man, this guy just shows up to work every single night. He goes out there and he does 
really literally everything to help the Rangers win. Uh, just a really, really good all-around player. And again, somebody that you don't worry about. He's always ready to go. He's always always ready to play some hockey. Uh, and then Cooley, he's got a goal, the first of his NHL career, and he's out there hitting everything that moves. Uh, I should have checked the Ranger leaders in hits. I know Cooley has eight. I'm not sure if that's at the top or not. True, but you got to figure is up there pretty high. But Will Cooley's played very physical. Looks like he belongs. Uh, looks confident out there. And I don't know this for sure, but maybe having somebody like Blake Wheeler on his line, maybe that helps. You know, he's got a veteran presence with him. Maybe Wheeler and Cooley talk all the time. I, I have no idea if that's true or not. But again, Blake Wheeler, despite himself not being off to an awesome start, uh, his two line mates look great. They, they're off to very strong starts to the season for the New York Rangers. And one other thing I want to mention here, um, even if the Rangers immediately came to the conclusion right now that like, oh, Wheeler's washed and he can't play anymore and he's too slow and this, that, and the other thing, they're not going to wave him three games into the season because they would look ridiculous for doing that. You got to save face a little bit. And again, I, I find it impossible to believe that there's a, a single member of the Ranger front office that, that's even considering considering this move uh, at this point. So, you know, we'll see how things go. Like I said, it, it could be a conversation to be had. Um, you know, a little bit later in the season, if we get to Thanksgiving and Wheeler hasn't picked it up by then, but for right now, lackluster start, give the man a chance. Uh, he has certainly earned it through the course of his NHL career. Uh, what other thing that kind of facilitated this talk or seemed to facilitate this talk of waving Blake Wheeler is the idea that maybe just maybe Patrick Kane could be interested in a reunion with the Rangers. And you know, part of this chatter, we were reading the tweets earlier and Deb pointed this out. It, it, again, it comes from the fact that these rumors are swirling due to a report uh, by Frank Saravelli. Uh, this is what he had to tweet the other day. I believe this was yesterday when this tweet went out. Patrick Kane isn't likely to make a decision on a new home before November. And this isn't an exhaustive list, but keep an eye on these three teams over the next few weeks. And the three teams he listed were the Buffalo Sabres, the New York Rangers, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, so Buffalo, you know, you connect the dots there. He's from Buffalo. Maybe he wants to go home. They've got a team that seems to be improving. Uh, the Rangers, look, he wanted to come here last year. Maybe he wants another crack at it. Uh, got to figure he's a little bit unsatisfied how everything went down last year, especially in the playoffs. Uh, and then the Red Wings, I'm not really sure. I mean, the, there's a lot of history with that team, and that's a team that's starting to improve a little bit. And, um, you know, may, maybe he wants to be a part of that. Maybe he feels like he can help that team uh, take the next step. But, you know, he mentioned also, it's not just these three teams. Kane could basically end up anywhere. And again, as far as Kane goes, we could do a whole other episode on this topic alone. And the idea of maybe bringing him back, I'm at least open to the idea, you know, if you're going to be one of the last 32 or the last team out of the 32 teams standing, then I think uh, at some time or another, it does make sense to make some bold moves and take some risks. Um, you know, and Patrick Kane, if he's fully healthy, maybe he more closely resembles the phenomenal player that he's been throughout his entire career, rather than just, you know, a guy that had his moments as a member of the Rangers, but never exactly set the world on fire either. I, I think that's fair to say. Um, but again, the idea that to bring all this back to Wheeler, the idea, the idea that Blake Wheeler is now on the chopping block because Frank Zaravelli sends out a tweet where he mentions a couple of different teams that might have some interest in Patrick Kane. Uh, that, to me, is just ridiculous. Uh, let's let everything play out here. I mean, we, there's so many questions that need to be answered before we even get to the idea of waving Wheeler in a scenario like that. First of all, is Kane willing to take uh, enough of a discount from the Rangers that it would require for him to fit in under the salary cap. That's first and foremost. Does Kane want to be back with the Rangers? Do the Rangers want Kane back? Um, you know, do, does would Wheeler even be the guy that gets waived to make room for Kane? I mean, it could be Pitlick, could be VZ. I like VZ. I wouldn't make it be him. Um, but you know, would one of those two players be traded to make room for Patrick Kane? We'll see. I mean, again, there, there's no way of knowing any of these questions, the answers to any of these questions uh, at this point. The bottom line, there's a million different ways this thing could go. And again, just, just going right from, oh, maybe the Rangers could be a fit for Patrick Kane to, oh my God, wave Blake Wheeler. No, we're, we're not doing that. That's a bridge too far. It's just a little bit ridiculous. So uh, yeah, stay the course with Blake Wheeler. Again, I, I don't rule out the possibility. I mentioned this earlier that Okay, maybe he's older. Maybe he just can't do it anymore. That is, that's an option, a possibility that is at least on the table here. But let's find out. Let, let's let him play a handful of games with his new team, get acclimated to his new surroundings, new coaching staff, new systems, new teammates, new fan base. Let's give the man a chance. Uh, again, I, as I said earlier, I think he certainly earned it through his NHL career. One more thing I'll say about Blake Wheeler here. 55 points in 72 games last season. That alone is more than enough of a reason for me to believe 
that Blake Wheeler deserves more than three games to, to, to prove his worth here with the Rangers. And one final, final point. Um, think about pro sports, or it doesn't even have to be pro sports. It can really be any sport at any level. And just think uh, who else has, during the course of playing sports in their life, had a three-game stretch that is somewhat lackluster. The answer to that is literally everyone, whether we're talking pro hockey players, whether we're talking college basketball players, whether we're talking Pop Warner football players, whether it's you or me, the guy mowing his lawn over here. Hopefully nobody uh, heard the sound there. He kind of went right by my door there, but whatever. Um, yeah, everybody at one time or another is going to struggle at least a little bit, is going to have a couple of games that just aren't going to end up on your uh, career highlight reel. Again, regardless of the sport, regardless of what level it's being played at. So again, the, the bottom line here, Give the man a chance. If he continues to struggle in November, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But hopefully Blake Wheeler picks it up and becomes a valuable member uh, of this Ranger team going forward. Got to keep everything rolling in just a second. I want to turn our attention to Thursday night's clash between the Nashville Predators and the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. We're going to get to that in just a second here. But first, got to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Jace Case. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That is why Jace Case, that is why Jace Medical offers the Jace Case. The Jace Case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical, make sure you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code LOCKEDONNHL at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, let's keep everything rolling here. Turn our attention to this upcoming clash with the Nashville Predators. It's Wednesday, a little bit into the afternoon here as I'm recording this, and Rangers going to be back in action Thursday night. It's one of those things, I saw somebody tweet this out earlier, and I kind of had the uh, the same reaction. That feeling, that, that sad feeling you get when you think the Rangers are going to be playing tonight, and then you realize, nope, they don't play until tomorrow. Probably happens to everybody uh, at least once or twice a season, and uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, but it is what it is. Hopefully the Rangers just come out flying uh, against the Predators on Thursday night. As far as this matchup last season, Rangers split with the Predators in the two games that they played them. Uh, they lost 2-1 to one in Nashville in November. Uh, they then squeaked by the Predators by a final score of 7 to nothing in Madison Square Garden a little bit later in the season. Uh, that was the weekend in March when the Rangers had a back-to-back. -back. They had home games against the Penguins and the Predators. They beat the Penguins 6 nothing. They beat the Predators 7 nothing. So a pretty solid weekend there uh, for the Rangers. In that second game, the 7 nothing win for the Rangers against the Predators, uh, you had Keandre Miller scoring two goals and two assists. Uh, also, multiple point games for Panarin, Trocek, Mika, and Truba. Uh, Yaroslav Halak started both of these games against the Predators. He's obviously not here this year, but he had a 22-save shutout uh, in the uh, the second matchup with the Predators. Uh, coincidentally, I, I think that this might be another situation where the Rangers end up going with their backup goalie, who, of course, this year would be Jonathan Quick. And I know some Ranger fans a little bit nervous based on his recent track record, as well as, uh, you know, some struggles in the preseason this year. I'll say the same thing about him that I said about Blake Wheeler. Give him a chance. OK, it is entirely possible that Jonathan Quick, once again, just can't do it anymore. But I'm hoping that in a backup role, a little bit of a lighter workload, working with Benoit Allaire, who works wonders with every goalie he comes in contact with. Hopefully that all those things work uh, to the benefit of Jonathan Quick. And the reason I think Quick might be out there for this fourth game, you know, eyeballing the schedule, trying to figure out like, okay, when's a good time to, you know, sub the backup in there for a game. Obviously opening night is going to be Igor. To me, the second game of the season, that's too early to go right to your backup. Maybe other teams that are a little bit less settled at goalie. Uh, they have kind of a timeshare or a hot hand approach or like a one and a one a goalie type of situation. Maybe they would kind of alternate goalies to start the season. And I'm sure a couple teams around the league probably did that, but the Rangers should not be one of those teams. They got a Yorsha uh, arguably the best goalie on the planet. So the backup, whoever it is, is going to play sporadically. So you can't have him out there for the first two games. I thought maybe the third game, but then you realize, nope, that's the Rangers home opener. There, there's no way that uh, quick should be out there. It's not even quick. There's no way that Igor should not be out there for 
the Rangers home opener. That That's a privilege, and I, I think players really enjoy that game, and certainly Igor Shesterkin deserves to be out there for that. So we're now on to our fourth game. Rangers are at home against the Predators. Um, then, then there's a road trip right after this. I, I think this might be a good time for Jonathan Quick to get his, uh, his first taste of Ranger action. Um, we'll, we'll see how they look to play it, but... You know, there's the road trip coming up. You probably want your A goalie out there for, you know, as much as possible. Rangers are going to play some uh, Western Conference teams, some late starting times there. Um, and again, you know, with Jonathan Quick, you know, whether he's fallen off or not over these past couple of seasons, which obviously he has, um, you know, I, I don't think he should be waiting six or seven or eight games to finally get in uh, and play a little bit for the Rangers. So hopefully they can get him out there and hopefully Quick uh, exceeds the expectations that a lot of Ranger fans seem to have for him. It was kind of the same deal with Yaroslav Halak last year. Rough start, a couple of games where he got lit up, but he hung in there and, um, you know, eventually answered the bell and ended up having a, a pretty nice season uh, for the Rangers. So stay the course with Jonathan Quick. Like I said with Wheeler, once again, at least give him a chance. Uh, as for this season, we know the Rangers are two and one. The Predators enter this game with a record of one and three. Uh, they've lost two in a row, including most recently a home six to one loss to the Edmonton Oilers. UC Saros started that game, was pulled after two periods. Uh, and the Predators have only scored nine goals in their first four games. But honestly, that's kind of their MO. It's it's funny because the Predators, you know, the, the players come and go, the coaches come and go, everything, you know, changes as it does around this league. But it feels like no matter who's on this team, and there's some guys that have been there for a long time, but whoever's on this team, uh, they basically just end up in these kind of grinded out, gritty, you know, puck, 60 minute board battle type games uh, do the Nashville Predators. So that might be what ends up happening between the Rangers and Predators here. Um, what's kind of interesting to me is that, you know, for the Rangers Coyotes game, obviously low final score of just two to one, but I felt like in that game, uh, that was kind of a track meet. You know, there were a lot of rushes this way and that way, and uh, kind of some wide open hockey at times, at least in that game. And I feel like we could get a game here that might end up being the polar opposite of that. So I'll be interested in that. You know, can the Rangers outlast a team like the Predators? Again, kind of a, a gritty team and, um, you know, blue collar team. Can they outlast them in a game of, you know, low event kind of, I don't want to say boring because that's not the right word for it. I think all hockey games are exciting. It's just an inherently exciting sport. Um, but can they win a game where, you know, guys aren't flying up and down the ice. It's not a track meet and you're not just trading odd man rushes back and forth uh, the entire game. I, I'd like to see how the Rangers do in a game like that. Um, they've defended well for the most part so far this season. And obviously you hope that that continues here uh, against the Nashville Predators. I'm, I'm very curious to see how this one goes. Uh, Colton Sissons has three goals for the Predators. Uh, he's kind of a mainstay for that team. So he's kind of leading the way for them to start the season. And yeah, as far as the prediction goes, I don't know yet who's going to start this game. If Jonathan Quick starts for the Rangers, I'll say the Rangers win three to two. If Igor Shesterkin starts, I'll say the Rangers win three to one. And give me Mika Zibanejad. Either way, give me Mika Zibanejad for the game-winning goal for the New York Rangers. Uh, figure we pretty much call it there for today. Definitely looking forward to this game between the Rangers and the Predators. One last uh, note here that kind of popped up on Twitter right before I hit record, though. Uh, Nick Bonino is dealing with, okay, take a guess. It's either upper body injury or lower body injury. Because as we know, those are the only two injuries that exist in the world of the NHL. It's a lower body injury. Uh, Bonino is listed as day-to-day -day and is not practicing today. And uh, when I say today, once again, it is Wednesday as I'm recording this. So we'll keep an eye on that. I think Bonino overall has played pretty well. Um, again, somebody that just understands his role and um, not a superstar player by any stretch, but uh, the little things, he, he does a lot of them very, very well. And I think we've seen examples of that uh, in these first couple of games here, namely on the penalty kill. But uh, that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Definitely do that because there are some things that are YouTube exclusive. And typically when I post these episodes, Nine times out of 10, they will be available on YouTube before they're available um, on audio platforms. So definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. And a big thanks to all of you who have already done exactly that. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for today. Once again, thank you guys as always. And I will see you next time.